Always changing, one day I'm doing soccer and one day I'm doing baseball. I can't select a hobby to do. I'm so overwhelmed by what is going on in my life that I don't know what to do anymore to keep me busy. I keep on changing because I feel like if I keep on changing my hobbies I will finally find something that I will succeed in. My dad has always told me that one day I find a sport or class that fits my personality the best. Until then, I'm gonna keep on looking. I see all of my friends doing sports. One of them is doing baseball, one of them is karate, one of them is doing basketball and has been doing it since he was five years old. On the other hand, I'm not doing anything. I've gone overweight and helpless looking around for anything that comes at me. Trying to find a change more. I tell my mom what I'm trying to do. My mom has gone furious flipping through the pages and pages on Google. She'd search up some classes that she could enroll me in. From time to time I wonder if she wants this more than me. One day, she asked me if I wanted to do acting, drama, or even be one of the people on the track team. It's been really stressful for me. I don't know why I can't hold on to a hobby and it's been gnawing at me for ages. I just heard from my 12-year-old friend, Fred, that he got a black belt in karate. He had started karate since he was only four years old. I wonder what it's like to excel at something that you really enjoy. My hobbies keep slipping through my fingers like water I'm trying to hold. My mom had still been pulling out articles until I noticed the one that caught my eye. It was tryouts for gymnastics. A seizure just shot through my mind, a boy trying out for gymnastics, what would people think of me? But that night, as I slept in bed, trying to think of a new hobby, the gymnastics tryouts posters come back to me over and over like a boomerang. The next morning, I slowly walked over to my mom. Mom, I said shilly, my throat started to close up as my saliva got sucked back. I ran into my room and took out the poster and showed it to my mom. My mom's face lit up as she saw me hold that poster so passionately, of course. She said happily as her eyes went back and forth across the poster. Her eyes went back and forth like she was watching a ping pong game. Tryouts are in two days. The regret swept over me as I remember that I had no clue about gymnastics. I thought of all the good gymnasts that will be there, that will be there to beat me, that will crush my dream once again. I first thought of a cartwheel, I've seen people in movies and TV shows do them a lot. How hard could it be? I thought to myself. I ran upstairs and clenched my computer as I ran back to the basement. How to do a cartwheel for beginners in one day, I searched up, for me the more specific the better. I watched about five videos, hey I'm starting to get the hang of this, I thought to myself. After about ten videos I was motivated to do more, was this my true passion? I wasn't sure yet, it was the next day and I had mastered my cartwheel. My mom called me up for grilled cheese sandwiches as I gobbled them down. I learned enough about gymnastics to know that I shouldn't do gymnastics right after I eat. Because of this complication, I decided to binge watch more gymnastics videos. Instead of watching cartwheel videos this time, I decided to watch handstand videos. Now it has been around 30 minutes, and I think that I'm good. I went up to the wall and stirred up and down. You better catch me and moderate to myself praying to God in my mind. I go for it. The next thing I know, I'm upside down blood rushing to my head. I got it. I actually really got it. And it's not just the handstand. I got my sport. I think that gymnastics is my one and only sport that I truly love and don't have to feel pressured. I will deal with the whole boy situation later. The sunrise woke me up. I quickly jumped out of bed.
It's the day, I thought to myself it's the day of gymnastics tryouts. I felt nervous and excited at the same time. It was the day that I could finally secure my hobby. That's it. I thought to myself, no changing it, I want to be a gymnast, weather is the last thing I do. I was in my mom's Tesla as she asked me about what I was going to show them. I may show them a cartwheel or a handstand, but I'm not sure yet. You know there are going to be some great gymnasts there. My mom said, and don't be disappointed if you don't get selected. Her voice trailed off. I took deep breaths the whole car ride, trying not to chicken out. The next thing I knew. I was in a gymnastics gym. I saw girls doing round-offs, front tucks, and back handsprings. My stomach did a flip as I watched one girl do a combo of a round-off back handspring. I stared around. There were no boys there. My fear came back. What if all the girls laughed at me during the tryouts? What if I messed up a simple task like a cartwheel? A bold voice interrupted my... On a string, I met him at the country fair, son. The smell of sweet caramel corn and hot apple cider, with bales of day and everyone celebrating the fall evening. I was nine years old, then time when dads push you into football and moms into playing the piano. My friends wanted to throw darts at balloons, my father wanted me to try the high striker and mom, she just wanted to buy her good little boy a hot chocolate. My friend Tina was the only one who sat with me, staring at him, dancing on a string. You really like it, don't you? I looked at her and smiled, just look at how he dances and sings and makes everyone laugh. It's gotta be hard controlling it and all, don't you think? Your mother was all of twelve at the time, but she seemed so much older and wiser. She reassured, don't worry about all of them. If you try hard and practice and really like it, you can learn it and be great. So I used months of pocket money to buy Al from the fair that night, and dangled him off the side of my bed. Looking at the mirror, I learned to make him walk and jump and dance and sing. He could make anyone smile, and be whoever he wanted to be. Because of him, I learned different sounds, accents and tones. I learned to write jokes and stories, I learned to be whoever I wanted to be. My voice was changing and so was my body. Your mother was the prettiest person I knew then, and she was already in high school. She bought me books, and bits of cloth and string and wood to change and make Al grow and morph. Dad frowned when he saw me practice, admonished me with guidance like, go throw a ball like a real man, or learn to shape wood, at least you can get a job then. Mom was sweeter, but hoped I would rather spend time studying for a scholarship or help her with the chores. I was quite good at my hobby and favorite pastime, but I also wanted to be a good son. So I learned the woodworking and I played ball and did the laundry and took out the trash and studied very hard. It was only when I was alone at night. I would bring Al out, I built him a theater with, and a metal coat of armor. I wrote skits and stories, and comedy for the fairs. I could sing and groan and squeak as the story demanded. The booth brought in money, I bought everyone fancy Christmas presents. I was expecting a scholarship now, at the school Tina had been attending. Then the draft picks came out. My number was called. It was time to serve. I packed a light bag, we were told to bring one item of our choosing. People brought a guitar. Magazines of women, charms dear to their family or simply snuck in cigarettes. As my parents hugged me with pride, I grabbed the only thing I wanted to take, of course it was Al, the military is a strange place, son. Just as high school was. And society is, in general. Discipline and respect were most important. Pride and honor. Yet, smoking and drinking were all right, as was speaking obscenely about women, fantasizing things that were far from respectable. Playing the guitar was cool. There was talent there. Playing with dolls, as they mocked, was not. I got my fair share of tough love and brotherly taunts. Water thrown on your face on a cold winter night was also perhaps in good spirits, as were the mice in my socks. They were however all my brothers in that division. And they would look after me, 
as I after them. When the bells rang, we picked up the rifles and marched into the fire. That night lasted forever, or four days to be precise. The jungles were dense, we were out of food and far from the camp. Deep into enemy territory. We couldn't go back. Battered and bruised, we heard footsteps. Without a clue of where to hide, the three of us, Uncle Pat, Uncle Tom and I climbed a large tree. We heard footsteps all around, they were looking in the trees. They were closing in. I saw two of them stand below the branch I was clinging on to. Pat couldn't get a clear shot, he gestured to me. Al was in my pocket as always, I dangled him with a rope from my pack, and projected my voice into a grunt. The way I had so many times before. I heard them turn, and the rifle click. Three shots rang. The enemy soldier fell to the ground. His comrade was not far. I swung to the nearby branch. They heard me. It was all right though, Al was there. String, drop and repeat. Two more enemy soldiers fell down. We marched on as night fell, looking for water, and a way out of the jungle, being captured is the worst part of war, son. It doesn't matter which side you are on, all honor and respect is lost. Shame is forgotten and humanity is left behind. We were tied to a tree, rifles pointed at our heads, whipped, starved and humiliated in the hope that some secret would spill. We had no secrets, and no tools or weapons. Just Al, clung to my back that night, cutting into my aching back. His metal armor was cold and rough. It was just what I needed. I pushed him harder, farther down my back, onto my bottom which was stinging and sore against that rough tree. I pus.